Frank Stanford on CFAX 1070. Well, good morning and thank you for sharing some of your Wednesday with us on CFAX 1070. A little bit later on in the program, in the second half hour, we're going to meet with a delegation from the UVic Business Law Center. We'll uh, get into uh, talking in corporation and uh, all those issues after 9.30. Off the top, going to do a little bit of civic politics. The campaign is officially underway now, of course. Nominations closed on Friday afternoon. Lo and behold, eight names in the hat for Mayor of Victoria alone. Big number. How do we sort it out? How do we uh, sort the wheat from the chaff? Uh, we're, we're going to be visiting with different candidates over the next several weeks. So welcome to our studio this morning, Jason Ross. Who's Jason Ross and why are you running for mayor? Th- thanks for coming in to see us, uh, sir, by the way. It's particularly good we're doing this face-to-face. Oh, yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm much happier to be in studio yeah. than actually over the phone. All right. Uh, my uh, campaign... Uh, got inspired, I guess, from my observation of, of council. Um, my background's a computer programmer. I've I've done a lot of development over the years in, in the and the, for the province of Victoria, uh, BC. Sorry, um, and I, I was looking for a career change, I guess, at some point. And and around the time of the last election, I, I started getting in, in interested in local government. And uh, so I started showing up at council meetings and I actually started recording them. And uh, even the camera that I have in studio here, it's recording me for my YouTube channel, uh, is one of the pieces of equipment that I used when I went to council meetings and, and committee meetings uh, around the region. Uh, but I focus mostly on Victoria as a city because that's where the city that I lived in. Um, and I observed a lot. I, I, I learned a lot about how city governs, but I also learned a lot about how poorly it can be run. Um, and, and the city of Victoria is a very good example of that. Um, I, I don't think it explains what it's doing to the public very well. It certainly doesn't do a very good job of engaging the public and, and helping the public decide or even help have a hand in, in planning uh, and designing of what it is the city is supposed to do. Uh, I, I think it also discusses things very poorly. It doesn't really, um, it's not systematic. It, they tend to basically open the floor and just let every councillor talk about whatever they want, jumping from topic to topic to topic to topic, and, and there's not there's nobody even keeping track to make sure that points that are made are, are followed up on. Um, so it's been sort of a frustrating experience, but it's been enlightening in the same sense, too, that I, I've gone and, and I haven't just paid attention to Victoria. I've gone to Oak Bay frequently, to Esquimalt frequently, to Saanich. Uh, to Langford. I've actually gone to other municipalities in the province. Um, I was living up north for a, a brief period and, and so I, I paid attention to Fort Nelson uh, and I went into, I even went to Whitehorse when we were up there for a little vacation and sat in at City Council once. Um, and there's a lot of good ideas out there. There's a lot of poor ideas but the biggest issue is that municipalities kind of operate on their own. Um, they reinvent the wheel a lot and as a, coming from a technological background reinventing the wheel is, is, a, is, a, is a real faux pas. You're, you're basically spending time and effort redoing something that's already been done before. Yes. Uh, and, and the other side of it is, is information. I find information is really poorly organized, and especially when you're dealing with important information like budget information, uh, budget numbers. Um, it's often in a, just a PDF document or, or you know, just a scanned paper. Uh, the numbers themselves aren't usable. You can't a computer can't read them, you can't process them and determine, and the information certainly isn't in like a big spreadsheet over the last 15, 20, 30 years, which, you know, being able to track how the city's changing and how it's spending in different areas and, and whether it's being efficient now, you know, you can't compare it against itself or compare it against other municipalities. Is, is, is that why public engagement is so poor? Because I, I, I want to back up a thought to you. Yeah. You said this is one of the problems, but I, I was going to challenge you on that because, you know, the city does try. They, they have traditionally at, at budget time, when the council is, is in the process of debating a budget, they'll have a, a day-long public meeting at, at City Hall and, you know, three people will show up. And if, if that's the, the, the level of concern in the community, then you know, stop talking to me about being more open and accessible. But why it's, is uh, it that, um, say, I've been to a Squamalt's budget meeting from the, la- from the, the first year that they budgeted uh, for this last term, and they had a full room. So is it a problem what, that what, the people what, what in Victoria don't care? Yeah. Uh, because they actually, the, bu- 
the Scramble budget presentation that I watched and I actually recorded um, was the best budget pres presentation I've seen. Specifically because what they did was they explained all the concepts. Partly this is due to the fact that they had a lot of new council members, so they were having to educate their council at the same time they are educating the public. Yeah. But they went through the effort talking about this is what reserve funds are for. This is what our operation budget is for. And they explained all the details in a very easy to follow and, and with lots of visual presentation flair to it. Um, and the city of Victoria doesn't generally do that very well. And the, uh, budgeting, uh, like, uh, one of the things they had their, their budgeting presentation when they had this five year plan that they did this year, there was, they had two public sessions. They invited the public in, they did a presentation and, and even some of the charts, like there was one chart that was talking about, I think it was investment in reserve funds. And it was a chart going from, I think it was basically the first year before Dean Fortin became mayor. So 1990, oh, sorry, uh, was it 2000? Whatever, whatever year that was, but it was about finishing his second term now. I yeah. So that. six, so seven years in the yeah. past and then going to today in 2014. And it was two points and a straight line, right? If you're, if you know graphing, if you do any mathematical calculations at all, two points on a line when you've got seven data points is a poor graph. And that, it's, that's an example of the poor quality that they don't, they visualize information, they make it look good. It's all style though. There's no real substance. Um, another example is in the annual report. The annual report is supposed to have, um, uh, you're supposed to list what are the goals that the city has for the coming year. And, and this is according to provincial legislation, you're supposed to also have what are the uh, performance measures that you're going to put into place to make sure that you've actually done the job well or, or how successful that these goals were. And this current year's annual reports, the page for performance measures is just a bunch of random statistics. It's not, there's nothing tied to what their goals are and the information itself is irrelevant for a lot of it. It's just, it, but it looks nice and that's what they care about. And, and when they discussed, when they presented that annual report at council, that's all council was kudos. Great. Good job. This is wonderful looking, but it doesn't actually say anything. I have to ask you a, a, a pretty, pretty fundamental question here. Sure. How, how sure are you from the outside that you can walk into the mayor's office and, and effect these changes? I mean, there, there's a fairly logical argument, I think, that uh, that change is is achieved from the inside, makes a certain amount of sense that that uh, one should seek and win uh, a seat on council first, learn the ropes, look look at the mayoralty four or eight years down the road. Yeah, I, 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 what what qualifies you for this job today? No, I understand that question. It's there's, there's two, two reasons why I'm running for mayor versus running for council. One, the body, the, the number of candidates running for council is even larger than running for mayor. There were in about 25, 28, yeah, I think. I think it's 24 this year. Okay, 24 yeah. this year. Um, and I'm, I'm a real low frills candidate. I'm, I'm not, I don't have a big campaign war chest with me. I, I don't have a large number of supporters. It's, it's very much me trying to get a message out and, and, getting on the ballot is a success for me. It's not the biggest of sex, but I think I can, I think if I do get elected, I can do the job. Um, I think I know I've, because I was recording these council meetings, everybody who's on council knows me pretty well because they saw me. In a, I was there yeah. every day, right? I know the people that work there. And I, and I think, you know, I think there are a lot of good counselors on council, but they're led by the wrong person. And my thought is what a, for me, a mayor is a person who's a facilitator. They're the chair. They're the person that doesn't have, they shouldn't be giving their input on what they think should be done. They should be helping facilitate council to make those decisions and make sure that the process is followed and that all the areas of, of responsibility are covered on any given topic and making sure there's a consistent effort. And those are the things that I'm strongest at. I'm a really good organizer. I'm really thorough in my details. I can, uh, assess an, uh, an idea or a topic and, and, know, and find out what the best practices are and then adhere to that. Make sure that things are done well. And that's my skill. Yes, I don't have the experience of being on council, but I have the experience of watching them. And like I said, I've got that comparative analysis too, where I've, I've seen how other cities run. And some cities do things better than other cities. And this is true for any topic. Jason Ross is running for mayor of Victoria. Going to hear from him on a couple of the uh, on a couple of the big ticket topics that the of it will discuss the bridge, uh, perhaps after this break on CFAX 1070. Bringing you the rest of the story, Frank Stanford 
on CFAX 1070. Getting acquainted this morning with Victoria mayoral candidate Jason Ross and some of the uh, some of the reasons why he's uh, seeking the uh, seeking the office. Uh, let's talk about a couple of the big issues in the city. Particularly, did, did council make the right decision when it decided to build a, a, an iconic Johnson Street Bridge rather than the most basic slab of the steel that they could get for the buck and uh, the most utilitarian project possible? Oh, uh, it depends how far back you want to roll the the timeline here, because I think the very first issue was deciding whether to replace versus renovate the existing bridge. Um, I, I've seen, uh, I saw a presentation to council by Public Works where they brought in a big chunk of metal plate that fell off of the current bridge. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting about how the bridge has been maintained recently. And I think this even goes back to Alan Lowe's days as mayor, where they reduced the painting schedule or, or cut it out all entirely. Um, I've got a little video clip from the last election campaign where uh, former Mayor Pierre Paulin actually stood up at one of the mayoral debates and, and uh, complained that if you'd kept the painting schedule up, the bridge would still be in a, a safe and, and intact structure. And, and the reason why is because they, it, they couldn't manufacture plates thick enough at the time back in the 30s, so they created these different smaller plates and welded them together and the paint creates this seal. But if you don't have proper paint around it, then water gets in, to, in between those and rusts out the whole thing. So, so the paint is about more than appearance, you're It's saying. structural. It's structural integrity, yeah, mm-hmm. and that wasn't kept. Um, and then when we had the referendum that happened bef- uh, for the last election about replacing the bridge, it was a great example of psychological manipulation, I think, where they had all these pictures of the old bridge with the paint chipped and, re- and you know, rust and whatnot, and they had a comparison of, oh, well, the cost for replacing the, for re- retrofitting the bridge is X dollars, which I think is something around 20 million, and replacing it was around the same amount. And I think it may, even in the paperwork, it may have even been slightly lower uh, a bid to actually replace the whole thing as opposed to just retrofit it, make it uh, earthquake safe, and yeah. also keep it restored. Um, and so the public naturally chose, well, we can get a new bridge for roughly the same price. It's going to look better. And so they voted for it. And then the decision went from there where all of a sudden we're making this fancy world-class bridge that is using you know uh, mechanics that aren't tested they aren't there it's this is basically inventing a brand new mechanical bridge essentially there are no examples where this type of mechanism has been done in the in anywhere in the world in the same fashion and you told us a few minutes ago what you think of reinventing the wheel unnecessarily yeah exactly i mean you could make an elegant looking bridge that is using more tried and true technology and get a far more cost-efficient process, or at least reduce the risk. And that's one of those things that I think council doesn't do. They don't, they don't assess risks in the first place, and they don't put a monitoring process in place to make sure that the, tra- the project isn't going off the rails. Is it, however, too late now to go back? We, we, uh, are, are you telling the voters that, uh, that, that you would revisit this situation and that we might change direction abruptly, or are we so far into this project now that we have to carry on? I, I think... That's, it's a very technical question. I, I, I have a feeling it's probably the case that we're beyond the point of discussing this. We have to go with the new bridge because we've already, well, one, the current bridge has been partly replaced already. They've yeah. torn down the, the rail part, but the, and the other piece has been left to rot, and I have no idea what the structural integrity is now, you know, three more years down the road. Um, but you would have to have, I think you would at least have an independent assessment of what's the current situation. That would be the first thing I would do coming in as mayor would be to say, let's review all the facts and see where we're at. What are our options? And then let's make a best choice from there. But I, 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 like I said, it just based on all the money that's been invested in the current state of the project, and especially now they're starting to tear up that road, that the approach to the old bridge and, and, and doing all that somewhat t- odd, oddly timed work, um, yeah, it's, 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 it seems like it's full steam ahead. I don't know if we can change the, the ship at this point, but we can still mitigate cho- choices, I think. Sewage treatment for Greater Victoria necessary. Land-based secondary sewage treatment necessary. I'd like to see tertiary treatment, where we get actual you know, clean water out the back, but, uh, or relatively clean water. Uh, but it's, it's what is the plan, and, and this is another one of those situations. The CRD is, is, in, is in as just as bad a situation in the sense that they made up a decision to choose this particular solution without having a public discussion to start 
And I think that's where we need to start right now is let's just open the doors, talk about what the options are. Does it make sense to put it all into one big plant or should we maybe have multiple? Um, does it make sense for every, for the CRD to be the one that creates all these plants or maybe this is something that individual municipalities can team up on? There's, there's other issues that weren't even talked about, like the fact that so much of our sewage infrastructure is full of leaks essentially, that when you get heavy rains, we get an increase in sewage uh, t to treat by it can be up to a hundred percent I think or more in infill and infiltration yeah. yeah and 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 you have also some I think Oak Bay don't even have sanitary sewers they have combined so their storm drains and sewers always flow into in, the in some parts of Oak Bay that's that's true yeah they, they've got a bigger issue in Oak Bay than anybody else in the region does and it looks very much as though w w with the with the disintegration of the CRD's plan. Uh, and basically dividing it now into two, th those on the west side and those on the east side, Victoria will end up in, in partnership with Oak Bay. In all likelihood, both communities won't build individual plants. Right. M maybe they will. But. Yeah. And, and I think the, the biggest bang for your buck in any sort of waste management is source control. If you don't have the waste in the first place, then it's less you have to clean up. You don't. It's much cheaper to fix, prevent it from getting in the system in the first place than it is to mop it up. And so maybe there's areas where we can say, let's look at uh, giving uh, bonuses or benefits to residents who upgrade their housing to separate gray water from uh, from brown water, right? The water that comes yeah. from your sink versus the water that comes into your toilet. Yeah. Um, maybe we look at fixing our leaks and reducing the amount of in, infill and infiltration, infiltration that comes into the system to keep it so that it's only sewage that we're dealing with. And so we can reduce the amount of capacity that we need so it reduces the capacity of the plant that we have to build. There's lots of these logical places that we need, really need to be talking about before we start talking about the plant at the other end. Good luck to you in your campaign, sir. Where, where can people uh, find out more about uh, Jason Ross and some of, uh, some of his issues? Uh, you can go to moderndemocracy.ca, which is my campaign website and my website where I've I've maintained for the last few years about talking about democracy and, and how it can change with technology. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Jason Ross um, and I'm I also have a Modern Democracy Facebook page as well and I have a YouTube channel which is Modern Democracy uh, as well that you can uh, find videos uh, that I'm creating during the campaign to sort of create a different twist. You are running completely independently you are not part of any slate of uh, prospective councillors at all? Nope, I am completely independent. I'm, I'm doing this as a, uh, a sort of my stake in the ground to say I think things can change. And, I think and I'm guessing it's well. a shoestring budget. It is at this point. I mean, if people want to help uh, help out, I could use people more than I could use money. I don't want to use money without a purpose. And, and I'm actually kind of adverse to creating signs because it's a lot of waste. I think if people want to create their own signs, great, have at it. And I'd love to, love to see it. Tweet me a picture and maybe we'll even uh, run some contests on it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, some interesting ideas, and uh, really glad to have uh, glad to have uh, met you and had this uh, this conversation. Good luck in the campaign, and shake things up a bit. Great. Thanks, Get Frank. In there and uh, and make them uh, make them think about what they're doing.